Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the new powders that have come out from worst to best. We're also going to be doing some comparing and contrasting between different powders that are similar. I'm basically just going to give you all you need to know about all of the new popular powders that have come out in the past few months. I hope that this is some sort of guide to help you. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. So I've been collecting the newest of the new, the most popular powders that have come out for this video. I'm going to lay it all out for you. I've spent the last few months and weeks seriously testing these powders. I've been doing a lot of powder battles. <laughs> I've been wearing them the daily, like one powder here, one powder here and comparing them um, and so I've ranked them what I love and what I don't love so there are six powders that I've tried and I hope that this can help you so let's get into it the way that I ranked these powders is purely on performance. I didn't let price be a factor and I didn't let the style of powder really be a factor. The only one is I have a powder foundation that's relatively high just because I really like powder foundations. But generally speaking, this is all based on performance for my skin type. I do have a more normal to dry skin type. I am 24 years of age, so I don't have too much trouble with wrinkles and stuff like that. But I do like a smooth complexion because like I said I do have dryness so powders can emphasize my dryness and I do still have a little bit of texture I don't have a baby smooth skin so we're gonna start off with number six my least favorite powder by far that I've tried of these releases and this is one that's not as popular I saw it on the Sephora website and I saw it was new so I wanted to try it out so this is one that you probably haven't been waiting to hear about but I wanted to throw it in because it is new this is the beauty blender bounce soft Focus Gemstone Setting Powder. I picked mine up in the shade Buff. So this does come in different colors. So these do have a slight base to them. So it does matter what color you pick up. Now this is a loose powder. It has kind of a mesh part here where you can get the powder. And I've used this like three times now. So it's one of the newer ones. I've tested the rest of these a lot more than this one. But I came here to tell you I don't like this powder like at all. I don't recommend it at all. Today I'm wearing it on this side of my face because I wanted to do a wear test compared to the Tatcha powder because they're both the two loose powders that I have and yeah I, I really don't like this one. Um, it has a very soft sheen to it that I find emphasizes the texture on my under eyes. It flies everywhere and I don't know the sheen that it has it it's not a pretty sheen it's a here's your texture sheen it makes my skin look dry and every time I've applied this to the under eyes, it's made my under eyes look worse. I've tested it with a couple different concealers and just every experience I've had thus far with this has not been very good at all. So for that reason, this is ranking number six. I really don't recommend it. So yeah, it, it, I really can't think of a reason why, who I would recommend this to just because there are so many other better translucent and loose setting powders out there. This ain't it. I wasn't into it. Let's move on to number five. It is the powder I'm wearing on this side. And if you watch my videos, you know I have not been the biggest fan of this. This is the Tatcha the Soap Powder. I was for sure that this was going to be awesome because Tatcha is awesome. I know I said packaging is not a factor, but I was a little bit disappointed by this packaging. It's very cheap and plasticky. And I also do not like how the product distributes here. It just comes out of this little wheel and I, f I don't know. I just don't like it. I feel like there's a lack of control here. Anyways, this is the translucent shade. This is called the Radiant Translucent Setting Powder. It does have a little bit of a cast to it. There's a little bit of underlying color there. So I think if you have a deeper skin tone, this might not be very good for you. Yeah, I feel like this is another one where my skin looks really dry where I apply it. The one thing I will say comparing it to the Beauty Blender side, it did smooth my skin out a little bit more than the Beauty Blender side. The Beauty Blender side definitely emphasized texture more because of that weird sheen. The Tatcha does have a slight sheen to it, but the Beauty Blender has more of a sheen. Anyways, I'm not a fan of this either. I feel like every time I use this, again, it makes my under eyes look much more dry than they are and it emphasizes the dryness on my skin. You might like this if you have oily skin, but I don't have oily skin to speak on that. These two loose setting powders that have come out, not the best. 
Okay, let's move on to number four. And this one released a while ago, but it recently came back into stock into the US market. And it is the Gucci Beauty Powder. Now from this point on, all of the powders are really, really good. So even though this is ranking in the lower half of the new powders, I have thoroughly been enjoying this. Everything from the packaging, it's just so luxurious. It is a pricey, pricey powder. You're paying for the packaging. So if you're not one to pay for packaging, I think you can pass on this. I got mine in the shade number three and I've used this as both a powder foundation because you can build up some coverage with this and I've also used it as a setting powder. I love how versatile it is because you can get a light to medium coverage with this. If you use a nice kabuki brush, the coverage does build up. It also does have a little puff. I'm not a big fan of the little puff to actually apply coverage, but it is nice just to kind of set the face just like this and oh my goodness, I have those two loose powders on my skin and I did not like the way my skin was looking. This just by doing that instantly blurred my skin, you guys. Just by doing that, it improved my skin. This does have a slight scent to it if you are sensitive to fragrance. It's nothing too strong, I quite like it, but Gucci products tend to come with scent in them. Yeah, so this is like a lighter coverage powder foundation, but it also works great as a setting powder to kind of perfect, blur the skin, add an extra layer of coverage there because it does have some color to it. It's just a really, really nice powder, very versatile. I just like the other powders more, but if you've been eyeing this one, I do recommend it because of how versatile it is. It does blur the skin a little bit. It sets the skin really well and it wears very nicely as a setting powder. Moving on to number three, we have the Costa feathery cloud set powder this is such an amazing lightweight powder so mine is in the shade feathery by the way and you will see I'm starting to hit a little bit of hard pan here which I don't love but I mean the powder still works it's beautiful regardless it does have a very glowy sheen to it but it's not necessarily noticeable it just kind of gives you that healthy look to your skin it holds makeup on beautifully it definitely helps with wear time it applies very feather like you don't feel it on the skin and it sets the face beautifully it blurs the skin everything you could want in a powder this has i'm gonna compare it to another powder very very soon but this does get my thumbs up i think it works great for both dry and oily skin so across the board i think this is a very universal powder while these do have colors it doesn't actually provide coverage obviously you want to get the color that goes best with your skin tone but you're not going to get any added coverage with this it just sets makeup really nice Number two is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. I have the shade 230. Just be aware if you are my skin tone, 230 is a bit dark for me right now. Of course, if I lay out in the sun for like an hour, it will be my skin color. I'm a big powder foundation person and that is part of the reason why this is ranking so, so high. I love powder foundations and this one is so good, you guys. It really does blur the skin and it wears really well also. I would say it gives you a medium coverage. You can build it up a little bit past that point, but you definitely can't reach full with this. I prefer to apply this with a kabuki brush. My recommendation for powder foundation is always the Isom X57. It's the best. But I do like setting with this as well because it blurs the skin and softens the skin. But I would prefer the Gucci to set. So just a little comparison here. The Fenty Beauty blurs more. It wears better as an actual powder foundation. But the Gucci is more versatile, if you ask me, because it works better as a setting powder, but it works great as a powder foundation. But this will work better as a powder foundation, so if you're into it, I really love this, and I love how much it blurred my skin. Oh, also, by the way, the Fenty gives more coverage than the Gucci. The last powder that I have for you, number one, my best, most favorite powder, is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. One tip, I have mine in the shade 2N. I would recommend go lighter than you think. I normally am around 2N, and in the Dior shades. And this is my skin tone, but I would prefer something a little bit lighter since I normally powder in the center of my face. This runs deeper than you think. This powder is amazing, you guys. If you don't like powder or the look of powder, this is for you. If you stray away from powder, this is a powder that sets makeup like a powder would, but it's completely traceless. You can't see it. It just sets it silently. It also will keep the glow of the products that you have underneath. Of course, it is a powder, so it will take away just a little bit, but for the most part, I've never had a powder that really leaves the base looking almost the same before you applied the powder, but still has the 
same properties and same job and function as other powders. It is amazing. And I did want to quickly compare it to the Kosas. So I think if you have dry skin, you should go with the Dior because it's more of a gel kind of formula. You're not going to get any kickback with this. It's not like a powder. It's set really, really hard, almost like a gel. It's very odd. But anyways, I think that actually allows it to be more hydrating to the skin. Whereas the Kosas, it's an actual powder. If I rub my brush in, you know, powder particles are going to fly out. So I think that this will do a better job if you have more oils on your skin that those actual powders will sink up the oil compared to the Dior. So these actually perform very similarly on the skin. When I did my wear test, I could almost tell no difference. Um, it just kind of depends which one you should go for, the price point you're wanting. And I would say if you have more oily skin, this one might do a better job controlling oils, but both are so lightweight on the skin. Like I said, they pretty much do the exact same thing. It depends kind of what medium you would want your product actually in. But for me, I personally prefer the Dior. I think it's the best. All right, you guys, there you have it. This was a relatively quick video, but I did want to give you all you needed to know about all of the new powders that have come out on the market and some good stuff came out. I'm really happy with what they've been releasing as far as powders with the exception of those other two. And I hope this video was helpful to you. All right, if you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.